Hello, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Amanda of Inspiring Inkin and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be making this card. Pop it to the side. It's called a split tower card. And if I kind of turn it, <laughs> hopefully you'll be able to see, there are kind of little cubes and it stands. So you've got this kind of split cut work here. You've got somewhere to write that's really important on a card and it's super quick to make now this particular card um, is obviously a birthday card but I'm going to be designing a Christmas card for you today so um, grab a cuppa and let's get started so here is the card again kind of in close-up and you can see the cube kind of tower here um, it's really really a straightforward card to make um i'm actually going to be using stamps and dies for the christmas version and all of the measurements you will be able to see either if you scroll down and see more if you're on youtube or if you're watching this um in an email that i've sent to you or on my blog again just scroll down all the measurements are, will be there in inches and in centimeters I'm going to be working in inches today, um, but I will give you some centimetre measurements as we go along. So let me show you the stamps and dies that we are going to be using today. So this is Joyful Flurry, and these are the Frosted Flurry dies. Um, they are sold as a bundle, and everything that you see that I show you today, you can actually purchase from me in my online store. There'll be clickable links below as well. I love this snowflake stamp set. It's got such detailed snowflakes, but they're nice and clean lines, some beautiful sentiments, and a tiny snowflake, which is really useful, and some snow. Um, and then the dies. Now, the easiest way for me to show you the dies, I've, I've sort of pre-cut some things out to show you. Um, so let me get those out. Um, so firstly, you've got these two, which are labels. And they have these this lovely kind of dotty border. And they're designed to fit the sentiments. Um, these three, the joyful wishes, it won't fit, but the other four sentiments, it does. So that's the first thing. Then you've got these four open dies. And they're designed to cut out the oh that way around <laughs> the stamped images so i have done that already just to show you so they're designed to cut those out which is really cool no no fussy cutting required on. let me just get those bits together because i'm going to put them away safely <laughs> in my bag there we go and then you have got ooh, two teeny snowflakes. That's these two here. So they're not designed to go with anything. They're just a really lovely um, little embellishments. And actually, I'm going to be using those later. And then you've got these. Ooh, four. I thought I'd lost one then. Um, now, these are super special because what they do is they die cut and they give us a 3D snowflake. So you can kind of see on the reverse, you actually use your pokey tool, she says. Oh, it's there. And when you've die cut, you just press these pieces through like so and it gives you this amazing dimension so the snowflakes themselves don't cut out um but i have been playing with this set of dies the stylish shapes dies it's one of my favorite die sets and the circles cut 
these out beautifully and you'll see that's how I'm actually going to mount the image the focal image that I use later so a wonderful wonderful bundle let me get all of this away and then I'll show you the card okay so we are going to start out with a piece of thick basic white card now this is actually going to form the card base now our standard basic white card is really lovely for stamping on but for me it's just not quite thick enough to make a card blank from so um, if ever I want to use white I go for the thick card so the card base is nine inches by four so that means that you can get two out of an A4 piece of cardstock. So we're going to have nine by four. If you're working centimetres, that's 10 centimetres by 23. And then we're going to score this. So we're going to score it at one inch, two inches. three inches, six inches, seven inches, and eight inches. So you've got three score lines at one end and three score lines at the other end. So if you're working in centimetres, that will be two and a half, five, seven and a half centimetres, then 15 and a half, 18 and 20 and a half. And um, whilst I've got the trimmer out, I'm just going to cut my other pieces. So I need, let's see, some Coastal Cabana card. And I need a piece that is a three and three quarters by two and three quarters. And that is for... Let me bring this one in and show you. So that's the that's the early espresso layer there. And then we need some more. Ooh, which are three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters. So I'm actually doing matting layers here. So that's one. and two so that's those two pieces then we need um, a piece of patterned paper so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stamp my patterned paper with these lovely snowflakes so I'm actually going to uh, cut a piece of white card um and then i'm going to stamp it and then i'll cut it afterwards so we want a piece that is three and a half inches square it will all become clear i promise in a minute so this piece is going to form the center panel here and the layer panels here okay so we will need the trimmer again, but we're just going to get on with the stamping bit first. So I've got three, the three different uh, sizes of snowflake and the snow. And I'm going to start out with Coastal Cabana and the biggest snowflake. I'm just going to put three big snowflakes on there. Um, and then little bits of this snowflake and then the snow in all the gaps just to kind of fill it and I'm not worried at all 
about it going over the snowflakes because you know on a snowy day you would have this whole sort of breakdown of of snow and snowflakes um kind of oh, what am i trying to say i'm just trying to say that you would be able to see the detail of some of the snowflakes and and others you wouldn't and then i'm going to use the tiny snowflake but i'm going to go in with this bermuda bay so it's so much deeper and I'm going to put lots of these little snowflakes around. And again, I'm not worried if they kind of overlap. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Marvellous. Right, I'm going to put two more on. You need an odd number. Uh, just there. Okay. So there we go. So that's, that's um, finished. We'll cut that in a minute and then we need a banner to go on the card as well so i have cut this already just so that i didn't have to bring my stump cut and emboss under the camera um normally the way i recommend that you do it is you stamp first and then die cut because you'll always get a, a nice nice crisp image um but I need to do it the other way today. Okay, so that's all the stamping done. Let's move everything that is inky out of the way and pull in. Oh, this piece. Um, what I do want to show you is I, I did uh, die cut a couple of the snowflakes. I'm really liking that one um, but I'm going to be using this one today and we need a few rhinestones and this just needs pushing through so you can see all of the little elements um, but where it's been in a been in a bag waiting for me to film this video it's got a bit squashed so it just takes a second just to push everything back out again there we go and let's get a nice oh rhinestone in the middle of that and we'll see we might put a few more on <laughs> before we're finished okay so we've got a little bit of cutting to do now so this piece, we've got these little strips here and we want two half inch strips to layer onto there. So I'm just going to cut one and then I'm going to flip this around because can you see there's not as many images here. I want a bit more depth of image. So I'm just going to cut there. So it's three and a half inches by half an inch. And then just look at this final piece. You might just want to go back and add a snowflake or two. Or three. <laughs> So that piece is going to go on there like so. Okay, so that's all the stamping done. We've got this uh, die cut element as well. So the final thing we have to do is to cut this. Now, depending on the way you like to work will depend on how you tackle this next bit. If you like everything to be absolutely perfect and um, perfectly straight and no margin for error, what I suggest you do is you get a ruler and a pencil. And I'll show you where you need to mark. 
if like me <laughs> you want to get the card done a little bit quicker then you could and and you're, you're not feeling nervous you can cut this um straight away so what you need to do is you need to look at the three score lines and you've got one one each at, at each end and what you want to do is find the middle score line and fold it up so you've got a short side at the back and the longer side at the top. And then you are going to mark every half an inch all the way down. Or you're going to put this directly into your trimmer and then cut. So basically by marking with a pencil, you could actually cut with a craft knife if you want to, or it gives you um a nice line to line it up on the trimmer i just do it this way so i'm actually <laughs> if the sounds a bit different it's because i've stood up and you're just cutting down to the score line this score line here and you lift it up and you move it along and each time I move the trimmer blade up and I cut down to the score line. The reason for that is if I try and start here on the score line and I mess it up, I'm going to end up with a score uh, with a cut line too far in. And I don't want to risk that. And there are little lines here on the trimmer blade and I can line that up with the score line. So just slide it up to the top. Make sure each time your piece of card is pushed right up to the top. So if you are working in centimetres, your cut lines are going to be every centimetre. There we go. So you'll end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we're going to do this, the same on this side. So your centre score line, fold it there. So you've got the little piece at the back and then either use your trimmer blade or a pencil and a knife. Ooh. And you will be amazed at how quickly this card is going to go together and this is kind of the only fiddly bit. There we go. Okay, so you've got all of your cut pieces. So when you open it up, what you need to do is decide whether the top one is going forwards or backwards. On mine, it comes forwards. So what I do is I press the next one in. But look, can you see just here? Let me just see. That one is still joined together. So, let me just snip that. Okay, so let me just check on this side, make sure I haven't got any like that. No, they're all okay. Okay. So, this one's going to come forward. So, that one's going to go backwards, forwards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this finger and I'm just going to wiggle it in backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards and then squish it down and use your bone folder to give it a really good squish because you want it to remember that that's the way it's going to stand and then this piece is going to fold forwards so again do the same 
So the first one is forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. Again, press it down. There we go. And then I'm just going to squish it so it stands the way I want it to. And then we're just going to decorate it. So I've got these stamped panels and they're being layered onto Coastal Cabana. And that is just going to go here on this side. And obviously with my original card, I used patterned paper, but this time I've just made my patterned paper. I'm going to pop a tiny snowflake in the centre there. Ooh, stick. I've got Tombow on my fingers, it's sticking to me. Let me just grab a rhinestone for the centre of that. Because you can never have too many rhinestones. Pop that one down. Again. And the same with the snowflake. And rhinestone. Ooh. Then this is for the centre panel. We've got this lovely snowflake, which is going to go on the centre. <clears throat> what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a dimensional in that very centre. And then I'm going to use the small dimensionals to go around um, the outside. I just don't want it to kind of sink. So, and, and these small dimensionals will get hidden a bit better than the bigger ones. Oop. Go, one more. Dimensional backings everywhere. I'm going to pop that down. And then the Happy Christmas sentiment. And because this is a white card, you don't need to put anything on the back because you can just write straight away on that. It's one of the reasons why I like white cards. <laughs> you don't need an additional layer, but of course you can pop an additional layer on there. But there we go. There it is. Your happy Christmas. And there is your completed Christmas split tower card. Let me just stand it up so you can see the, the square tower here. You've got stamped elements, die cut elements. Um, but the wow of this card, obviously, is this split piece. Now it does fit in a standard size envelope and I suggest you fold it like this and put it into the envelope because then it will mean that when the person receives it, it's already just to kind of spring itself open. Um, and there you go. So there's my, there's my original one and a Christmas version. So thank you so much for joining me today. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and my blog, which is www.inspiringinkin.com. 
Um, you'll find product links for everything that I've used today. You'll also find a host of tutorials and information and creative inspiration. I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.